welcome to another math this week. Today we will begin a look into simple interest. This is part one of a two-part video series regarding simple interest. So in the previous videos, we looked at how to use proportions and equations to solve problems involving percentages. In this video, we will learn the simple interest formula, define the parts of the simple interest formula, learn how to find a total payout or payback, and solve problems related to finding simple interest. So what is simple interest? It's the interest calculated as a percent of an original loan. Car loans, retail loans, some home mortgages, bonds, and circuit certificates of deposit are examples of using simple interest. This is not the only type of interest. Um, there's also compounded interest, which you should see in a video a little while down the road. So our formula is I equals PRT, where multiplication is between each of our variables, the P, the R, and the T. So what are the definitions? What are the parts of the formula? I is interest. This is the amount of money paid for the use of other money. So when you borrow money, it's the amount of money you're paying to have borrowed that money. Um, and if you're investing money, it's the amount of money that is paid to you for putting your money in the bank or to an investment account. The principal is the starting amount of money. This is either how much you borrow from the bank or how much you choose to invest. The rate is how much is paid for the use of the money as a percent. When we use the simple interest formula, we will concern, convert the percent into a decimal. A lot of calculators do have percent keys, um, but I'm not going to go over how to use the percent key because each calculator is different, but converting your percent in this to a decimal is concrete and it's something you can do no matter which calculator you have. And finally, T for time. This is how long you have to pay off your loan or how much time you choose to invest your money. This needs to be expressed in years, and we do that um, by dividing, um, if it's months, by 12, it's, if it's days, 365, that type of thing. The other thing we might have to look out, look for is the total you have to pay back or the total that is paid out to you when you're done investing your money. And we find the total by adding our principal and our interest, P plus I. So let's just jump in with some examples. Okay, first example, find the simple interest. Okay, so remember our formula that simple interest is I equals P times R times T. So for this one, we're looking for our interest. So we're gonna say that P, our principal, 12,000. We're investing at a 4% rate, so four, divided by 100 would give us 0 0.04. And for five years, so that's already in years, so we're just gonna say five. So we're going to multiply all those together. So 12,000 times 0 0.04 times five. So our interest, the amount of money that will be gained or added to our principal over five years is $2,400, okay? Our next example, we have, let's say we're borrowing $400 at a 0.5% rate for 10 months. Okay, so there's two things we have to do. We have to turn our percent into a decimal. So 0 0.5 divided by 100 would give us, um, 0 0.005, and then 10 divided by 12 to give the number so we can change in the years. Um, I'm going to show you so you can go ahead and divide. Um, so 10 divided by 12 gives us a repeating decimal. So in this case, I like to either um, keep my fraction form or um, I'll show you the uh, 
I will use division. So let me show you both of those ways. So let's fill in the different parts of our formula. So we're looking for I. We know the principal, the starting amount of money is $400. We have our interest rate, which is 0 0.005. And we have our time. So if you are good with fractions in your calculator, you can put it in as a fraction. If you're not so good with inputting fractions into your calculator, or you just don't know how, you can do put in your times and then put parentheses 10 divided by 12, and that will get you the same answer. So 400 times 0 0.005 times, I'm gonna do 10 divided by 12. And so we see that our interest earned if we invest $400 at a half a percent interest for 10 months is $1.67. So I gave this example because half of a percent is a very good percentage if you keep your money in a savings account. So you can expect if you have $400 in a savings account, if you keep it in there for almost a year, you're just gonna earn just under $2. Okay, so savings accounts aren't the best way to earn extra money. Um, but if you can leave your money for a while and just let it grow, it'll get there. Okay, next example. We're going to find the total paid. Um, we don't know if these are loans or investments, but we're going to find the total paid at the end. Remember, total equals the principal plus the interest. So we'll have to add those two at the end. So we have $185,000 at 2.6% interest for 25 years. So I'm guessing um, this is a home mortgage. So I equals P times R times T. So the principal, the starting amount you borrowed is $185,000. You're borrowing at 2.6% interest. We're gonna divide that by 100 and get 0 0.026. And you're borrowing the money for 25 years. It's gonna take that long to pay it off. Just move this over. So we're gonna multiply everything together, 185,000 times 0 0.026 times 25. And so your total interest that will collect on this over 25 years, your I equals $120,250. So now we're looking for the total that we will play back the principal plus the interest, so P plus I. So we have 185,000 plus $120,250. So that gives us, you will pay back a total of $305,250. So your total, you'll end up paying for your house as you pay back your loan over 25 years is almost double what you bought it for. Okay, let's look at this example. Suppose you invest $1,300 at 0.9% for six months. How much money will you have earned at the end of six months? So we're looking for the total, but first we have to find I. So I equals principal times rate times time of 1300 times, we'll give us 0 0.009. And then for six months, well, that's in months, not in years. So we need to divide it by 12. And I know six divided by 12 is 0 0.5. So because this is a, some, a simpler decimal, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Okay, so 1300 times 0 0.09 times 0 0.5 means in half a year, we will have earned 5.8 interest 
$5.85 in interest. So to find our total, we will do principal plus interest. So 1300 plus $5.85 gives us $1,305.85. For our total. Okay, the last two examples. The first one says Sally borrowed $21,000 to buy a new car. I'm going to circle that following our cubes method. Her interest rate is 4.3%, and it will take her five years to pay it off. What is the simple interest she will pay? Okay, so we're looking for simple interest. We're looking for I. So I equals our principal. It's $21,000. 4.3 see, divided by 100 equals 0 0.043 times five years. So $21,000 times 0 0.043 times 5 gives us that our interest is $4,515. Okay, our next question is what is the total amount she will pay? So we're looking for total, which is our principal plus our interest. So we're going to take our $21,000 and add our $4,515. Plus 21,000. Don't lose zeros in the process, and you're going to end up paying $25,515 in total to pay back your loan to buy your new car. And um, in case you want more information about, uh, oh, I had another example I forgot. I thought we were done. One more example, I guess, then. This is a bit of a long video. Mark invest $2,000 in a bond that will mature in 15 years at 3% at a 3% interest rate. How much will interest will he be paid? Okay. So we're looking for interest again. I equals P times R times T. So our principal is how much he invests. It's $2,000. Our rate is three. Divided by 100 is 0 0.03. And our time is 15 years. So $2,000 times 0 0.03 times 15 is 900. So the interest he will earn is $900. So what is the total amount he will receive when he cashes out his bond. So total is interest plus principal or principal plus interest. So our interest is 900, the principal is 2000. And so the total is $2,900. Okay, now for the last slide. Okay, we're really wrapping up this time. Uh, if you'd like more information on simple interest and what kind of accounts it's used on, these are the references that I pulled my information from. Thank you for joining me at this Math with Miss V video. I look forward to seeing you in the future.